Hello viewers in Flosstube land, or anyone else who stumbles across this. This is AM Dreaming Stitcher, here to bring you an update on my cross stitching progress. Uh, if you stay tuned at the end of the video, I may throw in a little commentary on why I do floss tube videos and floss tube in general and floss tubers who have come and gone and just things like that. But mostly, here at the beginning of the video, I want to show you my progress. I have three finishes. Don't get excited, they're really small. And four other works in progress, one of which actually is a new start, as were some of my finishes. So if you stay tuned, I can show you all of those things. And I hope that you enjoy seeing what there is to see. I have to apologize about the light I keep playing with it and trying to improve it and get it better, and I don't know what the secret is. But let's just get started so you can see some stitching and we can talk about light some other time. So my finishes. I showed you last video that I was feeling the need to do some smaller projects. Not that anything I'm doing is particularly large. Well, one of them is, but I didn't work on that one to speak of, so I'm not showing it this time. But uh, small things help me feel like something got done. So I showed you that I had begun a cross stitch card kit and I'm going to try to turn this up to the light in the hope that the colors show better without too much glare. I had begun this cross stitch card kit by Vervaco, if that's how it's pronounced, which I got at the Great Hobby Lobby sale of, was that 2018-2017, whenever that was. And I was working on this little bear. He's done on 14 count Aida. Uh, he is a kit, so everything's provided with it. I have no idea what floss they use. He's stitched with ten different colors. And, well, the kits all together are ten different colors. I'm not sure if any one of them had all ten. But it came on a floss organizer. And I stitched away, and I got him done. And this is what... I'm sorry, having an avalanche there. This is what he looked like when he was finished. Obviously, I haven't put him in his card yet. I'm trying to turn him up to the light, hoping you'll see the colors better. I think I would like to frame him with his card like a little mat, if I can find something the right size. But I did not only him, when I finished him, and tried to put the kit away as I usually do, with all the leftover bits, it bothered me to see everything that was still on the floss organizer because it didn't feel like it was really done with everything that was still on the floss organizer. And he's very small. I mean, you know cross stitch takes time regardless. He's only 59 stitches high by 34 wide. And so when he was done, I felt obliged to do the other two. So my three finishes are actually the other stitchings in this card kit. Now, for some reason I do not know, I felt obliged to tell myself a little story when I was stitching him. I gave him a name. I don't usually name my projects. I don't know what was going through my head. But I called this fellow Little Bear. Real imaginative, right? And this was Little Bear's formal portrait. And this was Little Bear's candid photo snapped by someone when he was playing hide-and-seek. Uh, everything was full crosses except at the bottom of this teepee. Uh, actually, it was full crosses too, but it was done with one stitch. Uh, stitch. One strand of floss at the bottom of the teepee to make it look a little more like grass. And the uh, straight stitches and things like his face were also one strand. Everything else was two strands on 14 count Aida, full crosses, and that is Little Bear and his various portraits. My three finishes. Not fully finished, obviously, but three finishes. And they took, you know, about as much time as cross stitch takes, but they were small, so it didn't take horribly long. 
I think the littlest one was uh, 51 high by 39 wide. Okay, after I did those little vervaco things, which by the way I stitched in hand because they're so small, there's no point in doing much else with them, I moved on to one of my earlier projects that you have seen that was the carousel lion I picked up on eBay from Bernat. Copyright 1988. There, I could not find any copyright on the bear kit there. But the lion is 1988. The lion, can you see him without nothing but glare? Want his colors to show. Has a stitch count of 176 wide by 134 high. He has on 14 count Aida. He has 20 colors in him. But there's a lot going on there that isn't just the full crosses. He has 19 symbols for various backstitching, French knots, lazy daisies, and so on. Uh, all divided up into three charts to show where to put the backstitch. Unlike the horse I did where all the backstitching was shown over the design and it made it really hard to read the chart. This one is certainly quite clear. I have not done any of those top stitches yet, only the crosses. Last time you saw him he was kind of a torso with a head and now he has grown a bit. Again I'm going to try to see if I can get the collars to show. Probably not very successfully. But I added his shoulder and forelimb and his hips, his rump, his tail, beginnings of his legs, all of that is new since the last time you saw him. So he's getting significantly larger, but hes I haven't done his pole, I haven't done any of the border. He's obviously still far from finished, but he's grown. He's looking lionly. And I work him in a hoop. I think I've shown you that before, most likely. A wooden hoop. And his threads are separated into bags with little pieces of paper to show me the symbol and the color number and all that good stuff. So that is my Bernat Carousel Lion. Some of the uh, top stitching, for example, but most of it, I guess, is going to be in the borders, but perhaps you can tell, for example, on the, on the back here there's a lot of red French knots stitched over that blue, for example, and there's different colors of back stitching depending on what they're outlining. They're straight stitching up his pole. There's a lot of things going on with him. We'll see when that all gets put in. So. I stitch fairly monogamously until I sort of run out of steam on a project and then I move to something else. And so after the lion, I turned to something I showed you briefly last time, which was my simplified, they call it, Orenko chart. Simplified because it has only 30 colors. This is no heaven and earth design here. It is the White Rabbit from Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. It will be, or is, 168 stitches by 112 stitches. I'm giving the stitch count in part because a lot of people will say how many pages something is, and I don't know that there's any standard set size for a cross stitch pattern page. So I could say they provided four pages for his chart. But I'm not actually using the four pages anyway. I'm using the one page, held back far enough, I hope, that you can't see anything significant, um, that they provided. So I stitch off the one page and I just look at the stitch count. And I don't mark my charts or anything, so that's easy enough to do. The reason I think I went to him is because I believe I showed it to you last time briefly, and I had a thread hanging off on his tabard down there, on that heart, and I said, I've got to get back to this and work on it. Well, oh lord, I hate this.
scroll frame. It's constantly falling apart. Um, I worked on him. I hope that you can see him in that light. Goodness. These things are so colorful and you can't see any of it. But I have sort of stitched him all over this time. I obviously added to his tabard down there. I started on his sleeve. I've been stitching in bits of his ears. I've been filling in his face. Um, he's really, really patchy still. You can tell working on the outline of his head. All of this over here with the trumpet and the little banner hanging off. Uh, filling in his ruff. Got all the way over to the edge of it. I've just been stitching him all over in bits and pieces. Lots of holes still to plug in lots. I obviously don't grid. I don't park threads. I just look for contiguous stitches when they are to be found and plug in the empty holes when they're not. And he has his share of confetti. Like I said, he's not having an earth, but for example, here between the top of his head and his eye, where I haven't quite stitched, there's just two little rows of squares there. You would think that would be easy to fill in. But in those 11 empty squares, there are 8 different colors. I counted because I thought, why haven't you filled that in yet? <laughs> and I figured out pretty quickly why I haven't filled that in yet. Um, yeah, he's got his share of confetti, even if he is just a tiny thing. So that's my white rabbit from Orenko, who does not look a whole lot like his chart, as you can probably tell, because they don't show you what the finished design is going to look like. They always show you, and, and they have their own website, and they sell it at Amazon, and they sell it at eBay. They show you what the original artwork looks like before they read it through a computer, so you're never quite sure what you're going to get. But for 30 colors, eh, I think I'll be satisfied when he's done. Nothing fancy. Okay, after working on that, which by the way was copyright 2007, I turned to, oh, and I'm doing him with, back up slightly, I'm doing him with DMC. I think that's an antique white Aida. Uh, don't know if there's anything else to add to that. I bag up the floss as I, as I work on him and put it on rings. It's bagged by number. Okay, after that, oh, I had a new start. I showed you way too much haul last time, and one of the things I got was this leaflet from the Friends of the Library. I can tell there's a bunch of glare there, isn't there? Called Abundance from Leisure Arts. There is no copyright date, but it's leaflet 2095. From the price, you can tell it's pretty old. I bought this principally for that pear on the back. And from possibly the Hobby Lobby sale, but possibly some other time. I had one of these Bucilla ready to stitch things where the fabric is stretched over a little wooden frame before you even start. And they called for four strands of floss, which they stitched on a 25 count black Lugana. I didn't have a 25 count black Lugana. So I'm stitching it on one of those little ready to stitch frames. And it's a pair. I mean, Clearly it still needs its leaves. It's not at all done. Do I have something? No, that's not blank. Oh, oh that's whitish. I can put behind it so you can see it a little better. A pear. That pear, by the way, has 17 different color symbols in it. It has a pretty small stitch count. It's about 31 wide by 36 high. But 17 different color symbols. I keep saying color symbols because three of them are blends. But there's 17 in all. That's a lot for a pretty small thing, considering there were only 10 in my bears and 30 in that whole white rabbit. This has got half as many colors as a rabbit, and it's just a bear. Anyway, that's my new start. Clearly it's likely to be my next finish. And it's tiny, so that won't take very long. The other thing I worked on, besides the ones I have shown you, was my... Oh, I'm sorry, I meant to... It's going to sound like it's all over the place. 
I meant to be uh, more considerate about naming designers and such because they are so important. And so I wanted to t point out that the designs in this chart are by Sandy Linen Clo, and the needlework adaptation is by a lady named Lorraine Birmingham. Okay. I then went to my Japanese Koi, my Monarch Horizons kit. Another eBay purchase. Try to get it where there's not too much glare, but then I can't really get the light. It has a number, looks like CS93. It's copyright 1989. The total stitch count when done will be 168 wide by 112 high, which happens to be the exact landscape version of the White Rabbit. He's the same stitch count as these guys, except of course the White Rabbit is full coverage and the fish are not. So it's possible that you're going to see a title that says something about reading comprehension because I need to work on my reading comprehension. I told you before of my fish that the coverage was a little iffy. The fabric was, you know, stiff and not very likable. You can see all the hoop marks. I'm working it in. Probably showed you a big plastic hoop. Let's go and get it to come to me. Big plastic hoop. And it's leaving lots of marks. And oh, these are bags left over from my pears. Bagging the pears as I go. The fish were already bagged for me when I purchased them from eBay. And I'd have no idea what kind of floss they're made with. Okay. But I was thinking that the coverage was kind of spotty, that you can see through to the white fabric on lots of the colors, like on the oranges and reds, especially on the blacks. I had four of the fish done when last you saw it. And I have added this fish down here, this red and black one. And I had a little bit of this one's head, but I've added to that since last you saw it. I still have to do this great big fellow that's coming in from the side and the one at the top where I miscounted where I'm kind of waiting to see if I'll have floss left over. So, reading comprehension. <laughs> this is uh, I like to share with you because you can understand things and you understand my embarrassment when I find out. I was stitching along and stitching along and wondering why I had so much black floss. I mean, I've got five out of eight fish done. Yes, they need to be backstitched. But I have so much black floss left. So much. Why? I kept wondering and wondering and wondering. And having set it aside for a while to work on my lions and rabbits and bears and things, I wanted to double check the number of strands of floss I was supposed to use. The lion, by the way, is done with three strands, pair with four. This I've been doing with two. Because I was pretty sure the chart said do it with two. So I checked and was happy to confirm when I picked it up again that in fact it says use two ply for cross stitching, all colors, except except the black, which will require three ply for adequate coverage. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's why I have so much black left. <sighs> so I am not going to restitch all that. Uh, like I said, it's patchy under the reds and oranges, too. I'm just going to leave it that way. It's just going to be a really patchy sort of a coy portrait. I need to learn to read. So this is done entirely with two strands over each square of 14 count Aida. And had I known what I was doing, paid more attention, the black at least would have looked better. But that's my coy. 
So that's what I've been stitching on this month. Oh, look at that. My hair escaped. Um, not a lot. There's never a lot. I am just not a quick stitcher. I will visit you again when I have another finish, which will probably be that pair. Well, I can't say when. I would say after I have another finish, because those bears, uh, the cross-stitch cards, have been finished for ages now, but I didn't see much point in coming up to post a video for three little cross-stitch cards. Instead, I you know, stitched my other pieces, and then thought, well, it's probably time to put up a video. And so it'll be that way in the future. I won't come to you, I don't believe, unless I have a finish to show, and that'll kind of help me know that I have something worth showing something that's done. And they'll probably usually be small things, but every once in a while I'll get something big done. Bigger. It's all relative. And I'll show you that. And I'll show you my progress. So, thank you very much for watching. I did say at the end I might have a little note to viewers about why I do the videos. And it has a lot to do with, with you guys. Uh, initially, I kept thinking and I kept saying that I do floss too because I wanted to add to the content and have something for people to see. But really, I, I obviously don't offer that much. I don't have a whole lot of subscribers. Uh, my first video had plenty of views, but my more recent ones don't get a lot of views. I don't know if people don't like my head being cut off or my fat hairy arms or the, the stitching I choose to do or my people are always apologizing for their nails and I don't apologize but yeah mine are a wreck um, I don't look at you I, I don't know there's a million reasons maybe I'm just not entertaining enough but I do have some viewers so I can't say that I'm doing this to add to the content because you have so many other choices for content and I can't say that I'm showing up because well I said I would I mean there are plenty of floss tubers who have come and gone when I started watching floss tubes. It was right about the time that Carolyn Mazio stopped posting videos and she was amazing. Um, there have been plenty of floss tubers who have come and gone and I don't know if they're coming back. One of the ones I mentioned in my probably first or second video was someone named, I think it was Crafty X Stitcher and I really liked her stuff and she marked all her videos private and is not to be seen anymore. Some go not of their own will, like Sunroom Stitcher, who got banned by YouTube for who knows why. Um, some disappear and come back by their own choice, like she's crafting. She took all her videos down and then she started again, although I'm sad to say she's not done one since March, I don't think. Um, Stitchy Ryan, I think he just got too busy in life and stopped posting. Some maybe weren't happy with the response they were getting, or maybe stopped stitching. I don't know what, but for example, South Africa Stitcher. I liked hers. SA Stitcher, I think she called herself, but she's not there now. Sporty Stitcher hasn't put one up for a while. I mean, some of the people are few and far between. So I can't say, oh well, I have this obligation to film when plenty of others have posted and gone away again. So why then if it's not for content when you have, for example, more than 375 floss tubers in the list that J Stitching Jewels put up alone, and I know she hasn't hit them all by a long shot, um, why would you pick my content over anybody else's? Well, you probably wouldn't, but some of you do. Why am I here then? Because the real world around me in my actual not virtual video life doesn't contain a lot of people who understand cross stitch. I don't know anyone that I'm aware of personally who cross stitches. I have a friend who used to. I don't know the last time she picked up a tapestry needle. Um, I know she was clearing out a lot of her kits some time ago that she figured she would never stitch. And she doesn't have anything like my sable. Um, oh, speaking of which, I did have a viewer who said she would like to see my collections. So you may see some videos popping up just to show stash. I will try to label those clearly if you're not interested. Um, but with nobody in the real world to look at what I have, my sister has looked and she's been 
mildly interested. She made some comments on the ones on my wall. She's done some needlepoint herself, but not for a long time. She was mostly noticing things like, well, some of them cover all of the fabric. I said, yes, that's called full coverage. And some of them don't. And some of them look teeny tiny. And I said, that's the stitch count. I mean, the, the fabric count. And some of them don't. Um, she really likes the tartan strip I did for my clan badge piece uh, because she says it looks like real tartan and I said well of course it looks like real tartan I patterned it right off the real tartan um, but it, she doesn't truly understand cross stitch I don't know anyone that does so what does floss tube do for me it lets me show what I've done whether it's a silly little bear card or a full coverage rabbit who doesn't come anywhere close to as complicated as full coverage can get or some pretty fish or a little pear or whatever it lets me show it to someone who I know even if I never meet you in real life and odds are I never will can at least appreciate what I'm doing someone else who's enthusiastic about cross stitch who when I say the four strands that I have to pull through this fabric get all frizzed as I go because it's a tight fit they'll they'll be able to say been there done that I know what you're talking about um, when I talk about any of it just showing it to you if you view it I at least know you're interested in cross stitch someone out there is interested in what I'm doing maybe not what I personally am doing but in cross stitch it makes me feel less isolated less alone um, makes me have someone that I can share my stuff with because honestly in the real world I don't have anyone I used to have my parents but if you've watched any number of my videos you know they're both gone now parents are the people in the world that if you are so fortunate will encourage you and praise you for every little thing you do um, I mean they tell you your faults and flaws too but they're there to be supportive they always sound like they love it and when you don't have them anymore you sort of lose that built-in audience of enthusiasm and so even if you guys don't comment or like even if only a few view each view tells me there's someone who now knows that I made this thing and understands the time it took to make that thing and understands the enthusiasm that lies beneath behind making that thing that understands the, the language and the terminology and all of it it lets you make connections so here I have babbled on and on just to say thank you to my viewers, my commenters, my likers, my subscribers, anyone that comes and helps me to feel like there's a reason for putting up a floss tube. Um, I appreciate you. I'm horrible at responding to comments. I think I told you that before. I have no social skills in the real world. Why would I have any in the virtual world? I should work on it. I know I should. But everyone who's ever said something complimentary I really do appreciate it um, I didn't come here looking for that but I appreciate it I came here I guess just looking for to share what I did to say look I did this and to have people know that I did this people who can appreciate it know that I did this so thank you thank you very much um, I think I should thank the designers more often for making these beautiful things that we get to work on but I gotta thank you guys too um, I really do love to cross stitch but I don't want to do it alone and with you guys I don't have to do it alone so thank you okay I may do some more videos in the future to show my stash acquisition beyond life expectancy five or ten times over um, I'll probably label those 
clearly for you so that you don't get sucked in when you're expecting to see a cross-stitching update. And I may do it like box one, two, three, four, shelf one, two, binders, you know, whatever. It'll be divided in what seems logical at the time. Some of it's so mixed up that it's not going to appear logical when it gets shown, but um, charts, kits, whatever. I may do some of those because I did have a viewer who asked, so I want to show my appreciation and maybe enable a few people to grow their sable. Um, and so watch for those. If I do film some, I'll post them periodically. I just really wish I could get the light better because it doesn't seem worthwhile if you can't see it. Thank you for tuning in today. Thank you for watching. Um, I hope you stop by again in the future. I don't need, you know, loads of views, but everyone, everyone helps. Makes me feel, like I said, look, I'm not alone. So thank you very much. And, um, do support other floss tubers out there. Thanks for everything. And, uh, I think I'm done babbling. Talk to you again in the future. Bye.